Welcome back to Arise Prime Time. I'm Charles Anyegolu, and this wouldn't be prime time without the presence of our guest analyst to give his personal perspective on some of the news and issues we've discussed today. And I'm joined for the rest of the program by Arise News Analyst and former chairman of the editorial board of Daily Trust newspaper, Mahmoud Jager. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. And um, I saw you sort of watching quite keenly the, the two <laughs> women we had there. Two very strong, very interesting you are women. Two very formidable women. Absolutely. The professor is uh, extremely conversant with human rights issues yep. and with the UN system and with all the problems mm. around it. And uh, the gubernatorial aspirant, uh, very confident, very well educated, compassionate, solid, mm. uh, capable madam. So really, you had two very good uh, guests. But uh, I mean, you, you have to wonder, Mahmoud, mm. why in a world in which there's so much clear demonstrable capability mm. on the part of women mm. for some reason in this country mm. we, we they've been ministers they're deputy governors they're this and that but for some reason we never let them get into that position of absolute elected control it's not only nigeria yeah but we're talking about nigeria uh, hey, because <laughs> the united states has never had <laughs> female president. Yeah, but they've had governors. Governors. I mean, yeah. uh, yes, yeah, well, and they've had females who really, who became the candidates of a major party. They had. You but, see what I mean? Uh, yeah, that is true. Well, anyway, uh, it's a matter of time. I'm sure uh, time will come. Mm. Uh, we have had some women who came quite close to winning gubernatorial elections. I think the late uh, Aisha Alassan in, Adama, in Taraba State mm. and recently the the Madame Bilani, Madame in Adama State also came quite close. There was a female governor of Anambra State by accident. Yeah, by accident, uh, by not, accident. not by election. No, not by election, but yeah. that too came close. So I think a uh, time will come when we will have one. Hopefully it will be very soon. Mm. Yes. And one of the things, just starting from the very top there, one of the things we talked about with Professor Ezilo, Joy Ezilo, was the fact that the UN doesn't seem to be fit for purpose. I mean, it, it's created with all these lofty ideals. But for some reason, well, for clear reasons, mm -hmm. basically, you've got a UN that is set up to prevent all kinds of things, mm -hmm. but the very charter... Mm. that it was made to, <laughs> that, that, you know, it, it uses, it's supposed to, supposedly to prevent those things. Member states, and particularly those in the Security the Council, us. yeah, use it to do whatever they want. I mean, is that because, you know, Russia, China, Britain, France, the U.S. have veto power? It's central to the problem. Mm. Now, these were the allied countries that won the Second World War. Mm. And they now crafted the UN Charter, as we said, with very high uh, principles and with also the determination to prevent another uh, world war. Mm. But then they now built into its structure a situation where nothing can be done without the agreement of all the five uh, of them. So even if the whole world reaches a consensus, if one of them deems it to be against its interest, I mean, the latest vote uh, calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, yeah. there are 15 members of the Security Council, 13 voted for it, including several of the permanent members, France, uh, Russia, and, and then Britain abstained, yeah. and the U.S. vetoed it. Yeah. So what does that say about world peace if just one country can yeah. veto a, a I mean, wh why can't they vote democratically inside that thing and the majority carries the, the day? Well, that is done in the security, in the, in the General Assembly. Yeah, but, but, but it is not General done Assembly, in the... Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's not, not done the, in the Security Council. Not, you no, have to wonder the key, why. Yeah, that's, the that's, that's the power there. Yeah, when they wrote it uh, like yeah. that, when they wrote the UN Charter, in 1945 and it has become impossible to amend it because yeah. you still need uh, the big powers to be able to do any mm. meaningful reform of the UN system. Well, we'll be, we'll be watching that one because, mm. Um, mm. <laughs> I mean, the, as you said, the impossibility, it's, a, it's like they've tied themselves in knots. Of course. Of course. And there's no, and they actually, the, the fact is that they don't actually want to lose that veto power. They don't want to, you know, in the last 20 to 30 years, since at least the late 70s or early 80s, mm. other regions of the world have been clamoring 
to have other permanent members, even though possibly that will compound the problem. Mm. But you know, we had been agitating Nigeria in particular, uh, sometimes with South Africa and Egypt, we want a permanent seat for Africa, yes. which uh, one of us, hopefully Nigeria, and then Brazil is there, and India is also yeah. uh, clamoring. But uh, in the 80s, the Western powers put forward a proposal that, you uh, know, the countries that deserve a permanent seat would be Germany and uh, Japan. Right. Now, which are political extensions of oh, the, the United <laughs> States. <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty... <laughs> it's, a, it's, an, it's an attempt to be wily. Exactly. But unfortunately, the rest of us can see it. We can see it uh, <laughs> plainly, yes. Yeah, well, let's turn to uh, Dr. Loretta Oduare Oboro. As I said, quite an impressive... Uh, young woman um, who wants to be governor, but obviously she's not at that stage yet. I mean, mm -hmm. she's she's just she's an aspirant in the Labour Party, mm -hmm. and she's got to got she's got to go past that. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know what your assessment of her is. Certainly, I mean, she sounds very capable, very confident, very thoughtful. She said many thoughtful things mm -hmm. about what the people of Edo State want and what they deserve, and also had uh, very good thoughts about program of action, and uh, also some very good thoughts about the problem of zoning, which in, 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 in our politics uh, usually impedes yes. some very capable people. So she had uh, very good thoughts, and uh, she said, uh, I mean, uh, she got a very good uh, reception she denied that it was a hired uh, crowd. Yes. But uh, of course, it is never easy to become governor of any state in Nigeria. Uh, even if you are a man, yeah. <laughs> I mean, only one person can be a governor. I don't know how many people are there in Edo, say probably four or five million or, or, or more, and only one of them can become yeah. governor. Okay, the Labour Party uh, won the presidential election in Edo State uh, earlier this year. So because of that, many people want to get the party's mm. ticket because they think it gives them... Uh, because on the, on the governorship level, it's and a different kettle well, of fish. Well, it's a different it? uh, yeah. kettle of fish because, as we saw in the general election, Labour Party won many states in the presidential election, mm. but only one in the gubernatorial election. Yeah. So it's not uh, given yeah. uh, as such. But at least uh, it is a moral uh, booster. Yeah. But of course, there are... The PDP is the one in control of the state mm. uh, government right now. And then the APC is the one in control of the federal government. So it promises to be a big fight. Yeah. And as you reminded her, her main challenge right now is to even win her party's yeah. ticket. Because unless you do that, uh, you are not yeah. on the ballot to fight the... But I mean, what, what do you think would be the biggest drawback that she would face? Is it the fact that she's a woman? or the fact that she is not in the PDP, which is the dominant power but, in that place. In other words, if she was mm, the candidate for mm, the PDP, for example, mm, would that dramatically improve her chances of winning, irrespective of the fact that she's a woman? There are both advantages and disadvantages mm. to being the candidate of the... You see, the fact that she is a Labour Party, which is not in control of the government, so mm. everybody has... A fair chance that right. is a more level playing field in the Labour Party primary yes. than there would be in PDP. You can imagine what's happening in PDP just because the deputy governor expressed an interest. Yeah, uh, the governor has been <laughs> uh, hacking him uh, incredible, uh, isn't it? <laughs> up and down. So actually, <laughs> it is not a bad choice to go to a party that is not uh, yeah. ruling uh, because the playing field is likely to be more mm. level. But of course, uh, after becoming the candidate of that party, you now come up against the party that is ruling, which has other advantages, yes. you know, financial and uh, all that. But uh, you cross bridges as you get to them. Absolutely. Uh, On that note, I want to thank you very much indeed. Your yeah. counsel is always exceedingly wise. Mm. Thank you. Thank Mahmoud you. Jega is a Rise News analyst and former chairman of the editorial board of Daily Trust newspaper. That's mm. it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye. Thank you.